What's up everybody? Sometimes I do filler videos, but sometimes I do in-depth guides to help you such as my ultimate beginner one right here, and today is one of those times. I have for you a guide for lineup suggestions at each stage of the game. We got early, mid, late, and end game. Don't worry if you don't have the recommended heroes, you may be new, may have had bad luck so far, I've been there, or they simply may not have come to your server yet. I will do my best to provide alternatives. Once again, if you're a new player, this looks like a game you may want to check out. Be sure to visit that link in the pinned comment to download the game as it helps the channel. Let me help your progression so you understand who and what to aim for. Let's get it. Wasting no time, we have early game. You are just starting out first few weeks, you're just starting on building your hero roster and improving your resonance center, which opens after chapter eight, stage six. Once this is unlocked, it will make it easier to do skyscraper faction towers and experiment with different heroes due to having the option to slot in heroes to gain an instant level. As you can see right here, all these levels are 200. I never needed to use any resources on them because in my core five, as you've seen at the top here, my lowest level is level 200. So no extra resources are needed for these heroes. Your lineup is gonna consist of mostly S heroes, maybe one or two double S heroes. It varies depending on your spending habits and your luck. So starting out after you're done the tutorial, and you get Imperial Captain from your summon, you will be taking advantage of your seven day login heroes. Day one, you're gonna get a 1200 recruitment box for summons. You don't get 1200 at once. These are 1200 spread across 100 days. Day two, you get Gang Beauty who will be your healer for the time being. Day three, you get Guardian who can be your frontline tank. Day four, you get Wrathful Pioneer, another tank frontline. I don't have much experience with this hero as I used as hero food. Um, day five, you get Sea Thug, who is a DPS with high DPS potential, specifically AOE damage. Day six, you get Uniform Girl. This is another hero I don't have much experience with as I used as hero food. And then the helpful survivability boost is going to be on day seven for the double S hero, Field Medic, who will become your hybrid hero of heals and tanking. Just keep in mind, you can top up any amount each day to receive these hero login rewards twice. If you're doing so and are limited on spending, I would wait for day seven to get your two copies total of Field Medic. If you don't want to spend, you will need to wait for the Officer's Aid event unless you get lucky with summons, which is on day eight of your server. That lets you choose from any double S hero for three days, so that's going to be three heroes. An early game team based around this would be Field Medic, any other frontline hero such as Guardian, the one I mentioned in the front, Gang Beauty, Imperial Captain, and Sea Thug in the back. For the reasoning, this will give a nice balance of DPS and survivability. Gang Beauty has decent heals for being an S hero, and because of her availability and being the only hero in the Bounty Association faction, it's good to invest in her because you will be using her for quite some time. Uh, once you get your Field Medic hero copy, it makes things a little bit easier and a nice duo for heals but super early game, it shouldn't be much of an issue until maybe chapter seven, stage 10. And I think a lot of players get stuck on this boss, especially the free to play. So it's gonna take some time, either getting a better DPS or getting better survivability. Some hero alternatives um, for the frontliner, you can use Party Queen. I personally consider the best S hero tank, especially after making a free to play account and messing around with heroes I forgot about. Uh, very tanky and okay damage. For SDPS heroes, I don't think you're gonna need to use too many here. Um, Imperial Captain will do the job. You're gonna be able to get a lot of copies for him because you will be summoning um, for the entire week. Um, but you could also use maybe the S hero Master Machinist. Um, she might be good, I've personally never used her. For epic heroes, you can use until you obtain hero upgrades. Um, you can maybe use White Angel, can be used as a healer solo or alongside Gang Beauty. Um, you can use the Hammer or Hockey Pioneer, can be used as a frontline tank. You get an idea for the hero class by this icon here. Assault is typically single target DPS, um, usually some kind of like assassin type, has some sort of leap mechanic at the beginning of the battle. Tank is for the frontline, firepower is typically AoE DPS, shooter is usually single target DPS, and support is for healing. A few tips here, um, try to work around the aura bonus scene at the top left here. It also shows you the faction advantage bonuses so you can see Bounty Association heroes gain 20% damage against Imperial Legion, Imperial Legion gain 20% damage against City Alliance, etc. The typical aura bonus I'd go for is three same faction heroes and then two same faction heroes for a total of 11% HP and 11% attack. 
Games with these faction or buffs, it's better to split it up because hero food will become an issue if you're focusing on too many heroes in one faction, it's an easy way to gain free stats. Always have at least a tank and a healer in your lineup. I would probably avoid assassin heroes, they are usually part of the assault class like I mentioned because you will lack heals or revives early to keep them alive long enough to make a difference. So a hero like Rose Vigilante will be less valuable to you and I would invest more so in a ranged DPS. Some important notes, um, you will have your first top up offer you can take advantage of if you choose to do so. You will have a double S hero choice card between these three heroes. It looks like this was changed to something better. Now it has all of the double S heroes to my knowledge, but there are still many double S choice cards. I went with Master Samurai for a frontline hero on my spender account has good DPS and some HP recovery. The other option is Card Magician for a backline range DPS, good AoE DPS and probably the best double S damage dealer in the game. I personally went with Miss Poison when I started due to the game just throwing me copies. I think she does decent, but then again, I do like to try different things. So who you pick is going to depend on what you're lacking. You lack survivability, you're gonna go with Master Samurai. You lack DPS, you're gonna go with Card Magician. You will also have the ongoing event server ceremony. Pretty straightforward event, look at each day's challenges to complete for rewards. You can complete previous days if you don't finish, so if on day 7, you can still complete day 1 challenges. You will get a Gang Beauty copy, which you can also use to ascend the one you get from your 7 day login rewards. So you're going to be able to take her to 8 stars if you want. The other hero will be the double S DPS hero, Outlaw Arrow. Um, you will get a few copies of him, um, as from the War Ceremony, then one from the Rookies. He falls off hard in this game almost instantly, I find. I don't like this hero. Honestly feel Imperial Captain the S hero outshines him, but it is worth investing into him if you get at least three copies to get your resonance center up and then eventually down the road. If you want, you can feed him as a nine star hero. I do not suggest taking beyond nine stars. Next is gonna be mid game. You've been progressing through the game, hopefully been able to drop the majority of your S heroes and your lineup is majority of double S, maybe one triple S hero. It's gonna vary depending on your spending habits and your luck. This is where the fun starts to begin in my opinion as I start theory crafting what I want my team to hopefully look like. I'm gonna give a few mid game lineup suggestions as well as hero combos. So ideally you wanna focus on one of the two meta setups. The first one would be two tanks, one DPS, and two support, one being a healer and one being a reviver. The second one would be one tank, two DPS, and two support, one being a healer and then one being a reviver. You can set yours up however you want, but this is just my preference of what has worked best for me in this game. A mid-game team based around this setup and what the game has to offer starting out would be like Master Samurai, Field Medic in the front, Card Magician, Outlaw Arrow, and Sacred Gun in the back. I like to run two DPS instead of two tanks because it's just easier than relying on one damage dealer to get the job done. Um, like I said, Field Medic is going to be a hybrid hero that takes the spot of both a tank and a support. So for the reasoning, the best support combo you will have in this game until you replace the heroes with their better versions is going to be Field Medic plus Sacred Gun. This gives you that support duo of heals plus revival while sprinkling a little tank magic on top. They can eventually be replaced by the Triple S Heroes Coral Diva and Holy Bishop. Both do what they do, but just way better. After these two, it's just filling in the other three spots with what you lack, such as DPS, whether single target, AoE, or an assassin, jumper to the enemy's side, um, or a tank. You will see a lot of Master Samurai and Card Magicians because of the top up offers that will give you those double S choice cards. Usually they both will be an option alongside Fatal Lily, who in my opinion is just not worth choosing. Some hero alternatives, um, if you're fortunate enough to get any triple S hero, you can replace your weakest corresponding hero in your lineup. So if you had a tank, then you got a triple S tank, you can replace. If you got a DPS, you got a triple S hero, you can replace. Week two, you will have your Justice Angel Interstellar being the best rounded, best hero in the game. So if you saved up your diamonds all from week one, which I highly recommend to do so, or you spent some money and got at least two copies to bring her to eight stars, she will skyrocket your progression. Only having one copy isn't beneficial because you are limited on what you can do in terms of ascending, hero skill level ups, and all that kind of stuff. Just remember though, your resonance center plays a big part in your overall power potential in this game. So although triple S heroes are the best of the best, 
a five star hero is not always going to be better than say one of your invested double S heroes at eight or nine stars because of factors such as the ascension star stats each star your hero is gaining 25% attack and HP. That is a lot of stats per star, unlocking a higher level of their skills, which in turn makes them stronger, etc. So if using the example lineup I showed, if I had Justice Angel, I would drop Outlaw Arrow if I felt my DPS was strong enough and maybe play around with the hero positioning by maybe placing her in the front, moving Field Medic to the back. In these types of games, it's all about trial and error because one stage a lineup may work, but the next stage it won't and you have to once again play around with the hero positioning. Double S hero DPSers instead of Card Magician or Outlaw Arrow can be Miss Poison. Personally, this is the hero I chose. I used her well into the late game and I think she does solid AoE damage with sustained heals. Shadow Knight has some nice burst damage potential, but unless you have Sacred Gun for the revival, I am not sure how effective he's gonna be since when he leaps in, the enemies will focus him down and most likely he's going to die very fast. Double S hero tanks instead of say Master Samurai uh, or to go alongside him can be Boxing King. I don't have much experience with this hero, but I'm mostly basing this off his skill kit that has some self-sustain, damage, and damage reduction. I think he is a very solid hero. Bio Weirdo, I seen some clips a long time ago with him being very tanky, but with very minimal DPS output, so you would need to pair him with some strong DPS or DPSers. Double S hero supports instead of say Sacred Gun, because everyone will most likely be using Field Medic due to her availability. This is tough because she's the only support in the game with a revival besides the Triple S hero Holy Bishop. I really feel Sacred Gun will be needed, so definitely pick her as one of the three from your Officer Aid event. If you can top up any amount, it's similar to the 7 day login, you will get that hero again. But unfortunately, not much you can do here if you don't have her, as she will only be replaced by the better version, which is the Triple S hero, Holy Bishop. Next is late game, and this is where you're going to need to start targeting specific Triple S heroes, either during Interstellar or Wish Summon events outside Justice Angel, because many players are going to need some time to recover their diamonds, according to the current meta of heroes, because Double S heroes will start to fade away, so I won't be focusing on those for this. It's very unfortunate how obsolete Double S heroes become in this game. They are simply there as stepping stones to build your beginner roster, and then all of them will be replaced, minus a few. Personally for me, based off my spending habits and time played, I feed all my Double S heroes, so it is wise to only take them to 9 stars, so they can be used as hero food later. Only a select few, such as say Sacred Gun or Field Medic, I would take to 10 stars if you need to build up your Resonance Center, Help in Tower, or 3v3 Arena while waiting on Triple S hero copies. By now you hopefully have some Triple S heroes built up, maybe two or three with the other Double S heroes. Once again, varies depending on your spending habits and your luck. Um, late game suggestions are hard here because it really comes down to what Triple S heroes you have. So instead, what I will do is show the ones I had at this point, being a low spender, and my thought process of replacing heroes in the setup. So for me, I had Master Samurai, Field Medic in the front, Miss Poison, Coral Diva, and Sacred Gun in the back. That was my team, I invested into these heroes. You can see my Master Samurai, Field Medic, Sacred Gun, and Miss Poison are all 10 stars. Miss Poison is actually 11 stars, which I regret doing, as that was a lot of gene potions used, I believe 25,000, and should have left at 10, but mistakes happen. The other hero was Steel Captain to 10 stars, which honestly was just due to having no other potential at the time. I mainly did this to get my Resonance Center up to the point where I could have my core 5 heroes all at level 200. Meaning anyone I placed below here in the slots, I did go over this earlier in the video, were brought up straight to level 200. It's a nice overall power bump. There is no regression system in this game. There is a reset system. But there's no way for you to regress heroes and get back all that hero food, at least at the time of this recording. Now it's time to nitpick and see what can be changed. I eventually dropped Master Samurai for Dr. Smart using Miss Poison as my frontline due to her sustain and added heals from Field Medic and Coral Diva. Coral Diva is amazing, a healing battery that never runs out. I got my first copy from the champion shop and even at 5 stars, you will see a significant boost to your survivability because she just heals so much. So now my team is looking not great, but decent. Um, Dr. Smart was doing some solid damage alongside Ms. Poison. PvP is where you're going to get the majority of your rewards. So late game, I started looking into heroes I needed to stay relevant in the rankings like between 10 and 20. I'm not a top 5 player and never will be. So my advice is to figure out what bracket you will fall into and go from there. What I mean by bracket is if you go into any PvP game mode, 
you will see in rewards and then ranking rewards. This is where you will get an idea of the competition you're going to face and this is going to be your bracket that you're going to want to stay in for rewards. Holy Bishop had his Interstellar so I went all in on him and then replaced Sacred Gun since he is the upgraded version. Sacred Gun only revives one hero at a time once for the battle. Holy Bishop revives anyone defeated at the time and twice in a battle. This allowed me to begin the annoying comp of heals from Coral Diva and AoE revival from Holy Bishop. I was able to get away with this for some time due to Sublime Spear or Soul Guardian not being released yet as they directly counter the healer revival meta. Really the only other way is um, using watch skills with heal reduction or reform tyrant to pull a specific hero. The issue with him is he doesn't pull the back middle hero. So all the enemy team needs to do is have a defense with their valuable support like Coral Diva put there in the middle and then yeah. I ended up skipping a lot of interstellars due to going all in on holy bishops and having no diamonds left. Once again this was another mistake but because the game was new I had no idea sublime spear would be put into this game um, and would be coming around the corner and be the best triple s dps at the time plus counter so much of the meta. I should have just stopped after two copies so I could bring Holy Bishop to 8 stars and have some currency left over. Because I skipped Justice Angel second week Interstellar, since I was new to the game, I've said this before in other videos, no idea what I was doing, I was really lacking a solid frontline. My Master Samurai wasn't doing the job anymore, so that's why I tried to put in Miss Poison in the front, so I was heavily relying on DPS and Holy Bishop reviving my heroes for PvP. Skipping ahead to avoid all the talking, this video is getting rather long. I eventually landed on this as my current team I use right now by going all in on the Wish Summon event that had Sublime Spear and Soul Guardian and then getting two copies of Justice Angel from the Wish Summon event with Justice Angel and Firefox Rider. Late game Triple S Hero Alternatives. Um, some of the heroes may or may not be available yet on your server. Um, for tanks, frontline heroes, Reform Tyrant, Soul Guardian, Justice Angel, Imperial Warrior, Warlord, maybe, although he is from the Assault class, so he is technically DPS, but he does have a defensive trait, so I put him in the front line, and I guess that's why I classify him as a tank, and then Armored Sage. I don't have equivalent heroes for testing, so I'm going based off experience, skill description, and what I've seen. Um, priority would be Justice Angel, and then Soul Guardian, then either Imperial Warrior or Armored Sage, whatever you get the most copies of. Both are good, but both shine later with stars. I'm talking around 10 stars at least. Then either Warlord or Reform Tyrant. For support, um, sadly, there's no other choices at the time of this recording other than Coral Diva and Holy Bishop. For DPS, uh, you have Lord of Thunder, Eagle of Perdition, Smiling Apostle, Dr. Smart, Firefox Rider, Sublime Spear, and Stellar Archer. Once again, I wish I had equivalent heroes for all these DPS for testing, so it'd be around 10 stars for my average, but even then, to see the true potential, uh, you would need to have them max, so 13 stars, but I don't obviously, so unfortunately, it's hard to say what is the best DPS out there, but if I had to pick, it would be Sublime Spear just based off his overall kit, and then it's going to be your choice between Lord of Thunder, Eagle of Perdition, or Firefox Rider. One thing to note here in the decision is Lord has no survivability, while Eagle and Firefox have healing off their ultimates, and from what I've seen, Eagle is the highest DPS out of these three. Then either Dr. Smart, Smiling Apostle, or Stellar Archer. These last two I'm the least knowledgeable about, but it seems from screenshots, even at high stars, Dr. Smart is underperforming, so between Smiling Apostle or Stellar Archer, it's going to be based off how many copies you can get. Smiling Apostle is more AoE damage, Stellar Archer is more single target but very high damage potential because she is crit focused. A tip is to definitely wait for a specific hero or focus a specific faction when it comes to the champion shop or cross server arena shop. This is honestly where I got the bulk of my triple S heroes starting out. Champion shop, the heroes change up so I would keep that in mind if you need one of these and just be patient for the shop to refresh and hope the hero pops up. Awakener and Reconstructor heroes won't be in here. As for the cross server arena shop, I would choose the faction you're invested into, but even though these random shards here have a chance at any hero in the game, including Awakener or Reconstructor, I've bought these five times now, so that's 25,000 currency and I've never got one. The chance is probably so small it's non-existent, so I would just stick to the faction you're working on. Um, City Alliance is still probably my go-to being the best bang for your gamble because it has solid triple S heroes. The most looked at hero would be obviously Coral Diva. Then you have Lord of Thunder for DPS. Then you have Armored Sage for the front line and then Stellar Archer for that high single target damage. 
Keep in mind Imperial Legion does have Holy Bishop and only three Triple S heroes, so the hero pool is smaller, so your chances are a little bit higher of getting the hero you want. And then Bounty and City have four Triple S heroes. This will change obviously as new heroes are introduced. And now I slowly have transitioned into what I consider the end game or dream team setup at the time of this video recording. New heroes can be released, obviously, that may shake this up. You have Justice Angel in the front, then Coral Diva and Holy Bishop in the back as your core three. Um, these heroes will be seen everywhere together. As for the last two spots, you can go with two DPS or one tank in DPS. For me, I feel one of those DPS have to be Sublime Spear, and then you can use Soul Guardian as the tank for the front line to fill these, basically making the meta team or the dream team setup. The reasoning behind this is this setup has everything. It has high DPS, the majority will come from Sublime Spear, but contenders will be Justice Angel and Soul Guardian. It has high survivability from Coral Diva Heals and Holy Bishop Revivals, plus a frontline wall of Justice Angel and Soul Guardian who are very tanky. Soul Guardian honestly is the best tank in the game, he just will not die based off his skill kit with proper investment. And most importantly, it counters the meta because of Sublime Spear and Soul Guardian, so if you ever have to verse a mirror lineup involving those three core heroes I mentioned, Justice Angel, Coral Diva, and Holy Bishop, and believe me, you will see many of these, especially at high level competitive PvP, you win if they don't have either an invested Sublime Spear or Soul Guardian or both. One thing I wanted to mention is Sublime Spear's true form isn't unlocked right away. Below 10 stars, he only has the ability to ban healing, which is still good for the annoying enemy healing setups, but it also removes their ability to self-heal, but it's not until 10 stars when he unlocks ban revival. This is when he truly becomes god tier. I see sacred guns or holy bishops revive go to waste and allows me to win the fight easier, having the upper hand of more heroes on the battlefield. Soul Guardian and Justice Angel are the same way in regards to because they are frontline heroes, they're going to be focused first the majority of the time, so they need those ascension star levels to take the hits, level up the skills to become more tanky, etc. Justice Angel you can get away with lower stars because she does have a self revive, um, but Soul Guardian, his ultimate right away applies a heal reduction to enemies around him, and he can also reduce their attack, so he is very helpful. Um, hopefully this video can give you an idea of what to look for as you transition through the different stages of the game. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one. Yeah.